Dogs are dying on commercial airlines. United Airlines is apologizing after a flight attendant forced a woman to put her dog into an overhead bin and the dog suffocated there and died. Meanwhile, another family had its dog shipped to Japan by mistake. It's not clear if this is a problem particular to United Airlines, but according to the most recent statistics, of all major airlines, they were responsible for three-fourths of all dog deaths. Mark Stein is an author and columnist and dog lover. lover. Cheryl Cassoni is a former flight attendant and obviously an anchor now for Fox Business. They both join us. Uh, thanks both for coming on. Cheryl, first to you, you mm -hmm. were a flight attendant. Yeah. Can you imagine yourself telling a patron, a customer, to put her dog in an overhead bin? Never in a million years would a flight attendant, I believe, knowingly put anything living or breathing in an overhead bin. You just don't do that. That is absolutely not what is happening. I, I, I do believe the flight attendant did not hear uh, when they were saying it was a dog. I don't think this flight attendant knew that they were putting a dog into an overhead bin. There's no circulation, there's no air in those overhead bins. And I also don't think that the flight crew heard the dog barking, even though passengers say that they did. Yeah, I wonder why no one stood up and freed the dog. But I think that's probably a completely fair point. Mark, what does this tell us about air travel or dogs or American society? What are the bigger lessons here? Well, I think one of, one of the lessons is that uh, air travel is the most controlled environment in any free society. Uh, I, take, I take, for example, what Cheryl said. It might well be true that the, uh, the flight attendant did not hear uh, what the passenger was saying, that there was a dog in the carrier. But in that case, and it might well be true that the flight attendant did not hear any barking. But then again, you have to think, well, would that mean she wouldn't hear the guy going Allahu Akbar? She wouldn't notice the sound of him uh, striking the match as he attempts to light his shoes. We have turned uh, an air, air travel into the most controlled environment in a, a free country. And as a result, uh, and I, I don't absolve the flight attendant quite as thoroughly as Cheryl does, but I think what's really disturbing here is the behavior of all the passengers, yeah. including the dog owners. No passenger, I, I say this, I, I mean, I get so annoyed about this, this story. I, had a, I have a dog who's very sick and has required specialized treatment at Tufts and up in Montreal and down at some place in uh, Pennsylvania. And the thought that if I carelessly made the mistake of flying to Philadelphia, this could have happened to my beloved dog, uh, terrifies me. If, well, you hear, if you hear a dog in a compartment, you don't record it on your cell phone. Uh, you don't tell a reporter afterwards that you heard barking. You stand up like a free-born citizen and you liberate that animal. And, exactly. and, and Tucker, you risk exactly being fined right. by the FAA. You, you, but wait a minute. Interference with the flight crew, that is a federal offense. Yeah, the FBI luck. is going to be right dog. there at the end of the flight to take you off. I mean, look, how many you times really, have you wait, seen Cheryl, people wait, drive Cheryl, Let me just ask you this. And you may be entirely right, but I, since you've lived this and worked on an airline, yeah. do you really think if a dog barked in the middle of the flight and someone stood up and as Mark said, liberated the dog, the FBI would arrest that person? No, of course not. What I'm saying is that passengers are afraid. Yes, no, you're, you're right. That is, you're afraid of being arrested. You're afraid of ending up on video. Look at what happened with United yeah. and the doctor last year that was dragged off the plane. They also are responsible for the death of a huge pet rabbit. I mean, they've got a horrible record but with animals. 18 deaths last year of the 24 that were recorded in the entire industry were on United Airlines planes. But again, passengers are afraid, Tucker, because you know what the fine could be? Even the Civil penalties can go up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars if you interfere with the flight crew. People were afraid. I think this mother and daughter were scared to say but anything, and I think the passengers were as well. That's why we have to end this, Tucker, because we're training, we're training human beings, we're training free-born citizens to behave yeah. like domestic pets, uh, docile uh, and spayed. Uh, because we're frightened that if we if we point out there's a dog in the overhead bin, uh, then we'll be dragged off in manacles by uh, and subjected to the TSA exactly. or whatever. At a certain point, you know, this is the post 9/11 environment. As a result of which, uh, we still let in guys who run down people on the New York bike path and blow up Christmas parties in San Bernardino. But we shuffle shoeless, like animals 
Generally speaking, if you see someone without shoes in public, it's an animal. We have, we have turned ourselves into animals in this post-9-11 environment. God, that's so, that's so true. Cheryl, really quickly, how does an airline send someone's dog to Japan? Uh, well, yeah, that's, United has also been criticized today because they, act, they got two dogs mixed up. They think it happened on the tarmac in Denver when the dogs were taken off the planes. They switched them by accident. This is the dog. Here we go. This, this dog went to Japan instead of going to Kansas City. That dog, by the way, is right now uh, being flown first class back to the United States by United. So they, 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 First they, class they, on United, the, isn't that good? <laughs> the record is not good, Tucker. It is not good. United and that CEO need to deal with this I mean, a society now. really is judged by how it treats its dogs, I think. That's why we're better than Pakistan. Thank you both. That was great and deep. Mark Sherrill, appreciate it. Thanks, Tucker. Time for final exam. Have you been paying attention?